Hey, so this video is going to be doing a little bit of double duty. It's going to be showing off a new feature inside of CP Extra 1.3, while also being a bonus lesson for the CP Extra up and running course. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can load CP Extra headlessly into Captivate. This is a way of loading CP Extra into your Captivate projects that doesn't require you to use the CP Extra widget. Now, why wouldn't you want to use the CP Extra widget? Let me show you an example. Here I have a very basic setup of a project using CP Extra. I've got those two slides at the beginning of the movie, CP Extra on the second slide. And here I just have a very simple interaction using CP Extra's enhanced object state features, uh, which is something that we'll get to later on in the up and running course if you are watching this. But for the moment, I've just set up a little bit of an interaction here, which is nice and um, visual and we'll see it in a moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this project to my computer and I've also got my ZAMP server up and running here so we'll be watching this lesson from a local host server. And now let's have a look at what my project does. So here we are in the output moving through that first slide and then to the slide with CP Extra and then finally to the third slide. And you can see here when I roll over this image it's changing to a different state, which is showing a different image. And then when I mouse down on this image, you can see that we see another state for this object. This is a very easy to use feature inside of CP Extra. But there is a problem with this lesson. And that is, if I go back to Captivate, then I go to the project menu down to table of contents. And then I go to settings for the table of contents we can see that I have turned on here self-paced learning. And what self-paced learning is, it basically bookmarks how far you got into the lesson. And if you close down the lesson, say at slide five of 10, when you open it up again, it's going to offer to jump you straight back to slide number five. So what's the problem with this? Well, let me show you. Back here in the output, I am going to refresh the page. And we can see we are prompted with a little alert here asking whether we want to continue from where we stopped last time. We'll say OK to that. That jumps us back to slide number three. But now you see when I roll over and mouse down on this image, nothing is happening. Well, why is that? Well, if I jump back to Captivate, usually what we do is progress through the course linearly. We go to slide one, then to slide two, then to slide three. But what we had just done was completely skip over slides one and two and just went directly to slide three. And that is a problem here because for CP Extra's features to work here on slide three, we would have first needed to visit slide two where the CPU Extra widget is located. So that means if you're using self-paced learning or using an LMS with bookmarking features, then loading CP Extra as a widget into your course may cause problems. However, with headless loading, another way to load CP Extra into your course, this is no longer an issue. Let me show you how to do this. First of all, I'm going to jump here to my desktop. Here you can see I've got two files. You should have received these files when you downloaded CP Extra. One of them is the widget, and another one is this infosemantics underscore CP Extra dot JS file. This is the one that's gonna be loaded into Captivate. So first of all, what I have to do is find my Captivate program files. Now, if you are on a PC, that should be under C, Program Files, Adobe, Adobe Captivate 9 with the possibility of an X64 at the end of it. A uh, subfolder under that is called HTML, and we'll want to do something in that subfolder. If you are on a Mac, you will want to go to Applications, Adobe Captivate 9, and then to the HTML uh, folder underneath there, and from that point, they are more or less the same on a Mac and a PC. So I'm just gonna copy this file path here, then I'm going to press Windows E to open up uh, Windows Explorer. Then I'm going to paste this into the nav bar up the top here, press enter, and now we are inside of Captivate's program files. I want to go to this folder here called HTML. Now that I'm here in this folder, I want to drill down into the assets folder, and I need to create a new folder here. 
And you may not see this uh, because my screen capture software is a little strange, but I need administrative privileges in order to create a folder here. So I do have administrative privileges on this PC, so I'm going to be able to do this. I will create a new folder called libraries. Then I'm going to jump into that. And inside this libraries folder, I'm going to drag in this info semantics uh, underscore cp extra dot js file and you also need administrator privileges basically to do anything at all inside of these files so if you do not have administrator privileges on your pc you may need to go and consult uh, consult uh, your local tech support about that and see if they can set this up for you following the instructions on this video or on the online help Okay, so now that I've got the libraries folder set up, I'm going to jump back to assets and then I'm going to jump to the HTML folder, which is above that. Now I'm going to select this index.html file. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste a copy of it directly into this folder and I'll continue with that. I am going to rename this file and I'm going to rename it to index underscore old. So I am created a copy of this file here because I want to edit the original index.html file. If after editing the index.html file, you find that something inside of Captivate breaks, you then have this backup index underscore old dot HTML to go and revert back to your original install of Captivate. But if you follow the instructions correctly, there should be no problem. I am going to select the index underscore dot HTML file, and I am going to choose to open this up in Notepad, not in a web browser, just in a text editor. And we can see there's a lot of stuff in here. What you need to do is you need to scroll down through here until you find the part of the code that says here at JS files underscore array. There's only one point in the entire file that says this, so you might be able to do a search and find it. So once you have found that, what we want to do is we want to put in a comma after that and a space and then put in two of these quotation marks. And then we want to put in the path from this file to the info semantics underscore uh, cp extra dot js file that we just installed into the program files. So I just to make sure I don't mess this up, I've already written that here. It's uh, assets underscore libraries underscore info semantics underscore cp extra. Okay, it shouldn't matter whether you use the single or double quotation marks. Okay. Now, assets, libraries, info semantics, underscore cp extra dot js. What we have done here is basically tell Captivate that after it's loaded its own information stored in JavaScript, then it also goes and loads cp extras JavaScript information and code as well. Now, I need to highlight to you it is very important that you leave a space after this at JS files underscore array. If you don't do this and just leave that comma right up next to it, that is going to cause an error and Captivate will flat out not load. So make sure that you have that space. Everything should be okay. From here, you should be able to save this file and you want to save it back here in its original location as index underscore HTML. Save, replace the additional file and you can see it says access denied because this is a administrator action and I've not run notepad as an admin administrator. So a way to get around this is I'm going to save this file to my desktop. Then I will close this down. And then I'm going to drag index.html into my folder here and replace it, which is going to require administrator privileges. And that's all we need to do, with the exception of going into Captivate and closing it down.
Um, I'm not going to save any changes. I'll just close Captivate because Captivate is going to now need to restart and load up all of its information again, and then it will accurately publish Captivate HTML pro projects with CP Extra installed inside of it. So I'm jumping back to that example file I had before. And just to make sure that it's working, I'm just going to go and delete this slide with the CP Extra widget on it. And I'm going to publish this movie again. I'm going to publish it to my computer. And then in just a second, we will see whether Captivate has successfully loaded the CP Extra widget. So first of all, I'm just going to show you how this works if we just play the movie normally from slide one into the next slide where we have that interaction. Now, when I roll over this, yes, we can see that the CP Extra features are working. If I go and refresh this page and then click OK to this to jump us back to the bookmarked slide, we can see we go there and the CP Extra features are still working again. Okay, that's great. The headless loading feature of CP Extra has fixed this issue for us. We no longer need to worry about safe paced learning or uh, bookmarking inside of certain LMSs. Also, a good thing about this feature is that you don't need to use the CP Extra widget. Every time you open up a pro Captivate project and publish out a HTML version of your project, whether that be just a regular HTML project or a responsive project, it is automatically going to have CP Extra inside of it. So it means you can automatically use CP Extra's features throughout the document. Now, of course, there are a couple of downsides as well. For example, if I go back to Captivate here, if I insert the Captivate widget for CP Extra into my document, you can see that we have a little bit of information here. For example, what the current version of the widget is, what current build it has, and up here a little thing that tells us whether there are any updates that are available. All this information you're not going to be able to see or easily access if CP Extra is loaded headlessly. Also, if you have a HTML project that you want to publish that doesn't use CP Extra, it becomes a little bit awkward to manage that because you will have to go back into your program files, delete out CP Extra, make the reversion of that index.html document. And then the next time you do want to use CP Extra, you're going to have to do that all over again. Not to mention every time that you update Captivate, uh, whether it be a major update or a minor update, you are going to have to go and uh, set this up again. And when there is a new update for CP Extra, you will also need to go find that new infosemantics underscore CP Extra dot JS file and stick it into the uh, little assets slash library folder that we created inside of the program files. And also another one, which might be a biggie, if you are sharing this project with a, another person on your e-learning team, they will also have to have CP Extra headlessly loaded into their Captivate program files. Otherwise, when they publish the project, it's not going to be able to use CP Extra. So just a couple of things that you need to weigh to figure out which uh, way of loading CP Extra is best for you. So that is another new feature of CP Extra 1.3. And next week, I will be showing you yet another new feature, which is uh, being able to call advanced actions when a slide object enters or exits the timeline. See you then.